Have you ever put a lot of effort in creating amazing emails only to find out that they ended up in your subscriber spam folders? It's super frustrating, right? Not only does it hurt your email open and click-through rates, but it can also damage your email reputation and hurt your future campaigns. But don't worry, in this video I'm going to share 8 industry secrets on how to avoid emails going to spam and improve your email deliverability. So if you're tired of having your email campaigns go unnoticed, stick around till the end for more advanced tips. Hello internet people, my name is Robert and first up, please don't use free email clients like Gmail or Outlook for your business. It just looks so spammy and unprofessional. Personally, I don't even open business emails that come from Gmail, I just drag them directly to spam and I get still a lot of those. And anyway, free services like Gmail are not designed to send thousands of emails at once, so they get flagged as spam much quicker. Second, think about email reputation. Use a reputable as ESP, so email service provider, for example, Flowdesk, MailerLite, or ConvertKit. These providers have a strong reputation with the internet service providers and email clients, which helps ensure your emails are delivered to your subscribers' inboxes. They also provide advanced features such as spam filters, bounce handling, and email list management. On the other hand, your domain name can impact your email reputation as well. If you're using a custom domain name for your email campaigns, it's important to maintain a good reputation for that domain in order to avoid being flagged as a spam. If enough people flag your emails as spam, you are in trouble. To maintain a good reputation for your domain, it's important to follow best practices such as sending relevant and engaging content, avoiding spam triggering words in your subject lines and content, I'm going to talk about those a bit later in this video, and only sending emails to subscribers who have opted in to receiving them. So don't buy email lists or trick people in signing up. And that takes us nicely to the next build a high quality email list. You want subscribers who are genuinely interested in your content and not just signing up for some unrelated freebie. Offer something of value to your subscribers like a discount or a free guide to attract the right people to your list. This way you'll have engaging subscribers who are more likely to open and interact with your emails. However, if you notice some people are not engaging with your emails, don't be afraid of removing them. You can set this as an automation, for example, if subscriber hasn't opened or clicked on anything in the last 10 emails, then you just unsubscribe them automatically. It sounds counterproductive, but you want only engaged people on your list, otherwise you are just paying for them for no reason, and they are lowering your open and click-through rates, which has an impact on deliverability. There are also email verification services which help you clean up your email list and remove invalid or inactive email addresses. That can harm your email deliverability as well. Some popular email verification services include Zero Bounce, Bright Verify, and Never Bounce. For email verification services, check this tutorial here on top to see how they work and how you can easily get started. Another thing you can do to improve your email deliverability is to use double opt-in. This means that when someone signs up for your list, they have to confirm their email address before they start receiving your emails. This helps ensure that you have a clean and engaged list and reduce the chance of your emails being marked as spam. For example, the email confirmation might just say something like, thanks for sign up, please click on the link below here to confirm your subscription. Or here's a bit more creative way that Ben's Bytes does it. You need to reply to the email with OI. This is actually genius because it confirms the subscription and the email clients see that people reply to this email. So it must be genuine. And that means it will less likely to go to spam or promotion. By the way, if you would like to access a downloadable checklist of the points I mentioned in this video, plus some extra that didn't make the cut, you can find the link in the video description below. Sure. The fifth tip is to avoid spam trigger words and phrases. Certain words and phrases can trigger spam filters and cause your emails to be flagged as spam. Examples of this is something like free, buy now, limited time offer, and guaranteed. And here's a great resource by Active Campaigns to dive deeper into this. So there's many words that you kind of can't use. Now, it doesn't mean you can't use those words at all, but use them with care and not in every email. If you have a strong reputation and you drop these phrases time to time, it won't be a problem. The cool thing is that there are tools to check if your email sounds spammy. Tools like MailTester and Glock apps 
can help you test your emails for spam triggers before you send them out. These tools analyze your email content and give you a spam score and suggestions on how to improve your email. Sixth tip is to authenticate your email. Most email marketing tools enable you to use authentication protocols like DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. All these sound like gibberish to most of you, myself included, but they can help you improve your email deliverability by verifying that your emails are coming from a trusted source. So they see that it's actually you sending it and not somebody else. Here's a great infographic that shows what each of these does in summary. You can see that the first two are must-haves and DMARC is just highly recommended. But I think you only need DMARC once you have a bigger email list with thousands of emails going out every week. Your email marketing tool should have instructions on how to add these authentications in their own service. The seventh tip is a bit more advanced and it's an email warm-up. And it sounds a bit ridiculous, why would you need to warm up your email? But this is a process to build trust with ESPs, so email service providers like Gmail. You start by sending a few emails and gradually increase the volume over several weeks or months, depending on your email list size and engagement rates. This helps ESPs recognize your sending patterns and so it improves your email deliverability rates. If you would just blast everything at the same time, they would just get overwhelmed. They don't know you yet. And then they'll be like, nope, this is spam. Let's add it to the spam filter. Now, if you just started with email marketing and have a small list, this is not really a problem for you. But if you are starting a new email marketing campaign and you have a big list with thousands of emails, you import it from somewhere else or from another tool, then you need the warm up. Also, if you have changed the domain for sending emails, you'll need to warm up your new domain to establish credibility with ESPs and avoiding being flagged as spam. The same goes for reactivating a dormant email account. The last tip is to write catchy subject lines to get opens and engagement. ESPs track the open, click, and reply rates. If this is high, it's a signal to them that this is, email is legit. Remember, getting your emails into your subscribers' inboxes is essential. But really, to make an impact, you need to have email subject lines that grab readers' attention and make them want to read more and reply. Otherwise, all that hard work you put into writing the email itself will go unnoticed. That's why you should watch this video next if you want to learn how to write effective email subject lines that reach 30 plus open rates.